Hello, Dr. J here, and what we're going to do is continue our introduction to the finite impulse response filters, or FIR filters, where we'll talk about the properties of causal and non-causal systems. So here we have a discrete time filter described by the impulse response, and we call that impulse response, uh, it's a band. We have an input sequence, Xn, and an output sequence, Yn, where we operate through this operation T uh, with the input. So basically our output is derived from our input through some operation. So here we have our input sequence. We have a filter response to a particular input, specifically the impulse. And then we have an output. So all the output is based on how we treat the input uh, sequence and how we use these values to generate our output along with this h sub n which describes how we're going to manipulate our input. So how we manipulate the input say here we have an input sequence and we have basically I'll describe these categories of our input sequence as past values, future values, and the present value. So if we want to calculate the present value of our output we have to use what's given at the input to our discrete time filter. So it either uses the past or present values. We call that a causal system. And in the future, it, if we use future values, that's a non-causal system. And that's all there is to the definition of a causal and non-causal digital filter. Again, uh, the previous example we used in an earlier video was a sliding window or moving average signal where we take these values and slide it along. We calculate these set of values here. And then uh, based on these input values, we get our output signal. So in essence, what we have is a causal system that requires only the present and past values. So here's an example where we have uh, a moving average filter where we take the average of three input values we take the present value and the neck and the past two values. A non-causal system, however, uses future values. And here's an example of a non-causal system that uses future values. Here we have the present value and two future values. The last two equation is what is known as a difference equation, and I'm just going to show the one for the causal system where we have the present value and the two past values, add it all up and we divide it by three. So that's our average of these three values here. And the difference equation is analogous to a differential equation found in continuous time systems. H sub n provides a complete description of the FIR filter. Recall H sub n is the impulse response. For this example here, for this equation, we have h sub n equal to one third for n equals zero, one, and two, and zero everywhere else. So that's our description of this, what we call a moving average filter or sliding window filter. Now, whenever the output appears before the input, and that's usually not desirable because that's hard to do in real life, then we call this a non causal system. And you saw that the non causal system, by definition, uses future values. Again, here's the example shown earlier where we have the present value and the two past values as part of our averaging the input values to get the output value. And then the causal system needs only the present and the past values. So you can see the difference here and here in terms of the plus sign so that whenever you see a plus sign that means it implies a future value and a minus sign here and here means it's a past value with respect to our reference uh, present value of xn here and here. So here we have a non-causal example of a moving average filter that uses the sliding window of 3 in which this equation describes where we have the present value and the two future values to get our output yn. So here's our sequence xn first three values are zero for less than um, uh, n equals zero and also that n less than negative two is also zero 
and for n greater than 6 it's also equal to 0. So starting at n equals 0 we have values of 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 1 for this time sequence. So 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, and 1. Now we're going to apply this operation here. So for example if these three values they add up to 0 so that's why at um, n less than negative 2 we're going to have y n is equal to 0. For n equal to negative 2 we have 3 because you add these up 3 and then you divide by 3 that's 1. We continue on for all the rest of the n's so here would be 5 thirds for these three values. The next 3 is here for n equals 0 so that's 6. 6 divided by 3 that gives us 2 and then here 2 1 2 that's again 5 thirds and then you see here I colored it orange or red here 1 2 and 3 just to show you that these this value here at n equal 2 is computed based on these input values so 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 divided by 3 that gives you 2 and then you continue on so on down the line here 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 all the way up to there and what we should note from this sequence it's longer all right you could see it's longer by one in this case and that the values going from the output values are are smoother than the ones here in our input sequence so there's less drastic change so it's not you don't see any value that changes greater than one like you see here but it's less than one also note that in the output sequence yn here we see that the output appears before the input and that's what defines a non-causal filter so here you have the output values of one and five-thirds occurring before n equals zero Here's an example of a causal running average filter in which the causal system only needs the present and past value. So here the present value and the two past values. This is also known as a backridge average filter. And here we follow the, along the same lines what we did with, an er, with the earlier example. Um, notice here the first three values are zero because we're using not only this value but the two pass values so that's why it's zero here and since xn is also zero for n equals less than minus two this is zero two so for n equals zero we have a value of three plus the two fast values which is zero so three divided by three gives us an output value of one and following along the same lines what we did here at n equal one we add up two three and zero that gives us five thirds and then notice here at n equal 1 we'll do the same thing that gives us a value of 2 and for n equal 3 we have 2 1 2 5 thirds and then at n equal 4 we have again value of 2 notice this is colored red just to show you how this output is computed based on this input and the two pass values so here we have 1 2 and 3 6 6 divided by 3 and we have 2 and then you can fill out the rest on your own so notice in here the output sequence does not appear before the input sequence so it's all zero before n equals zero and that's why this is called the causal system and it's based on this formula the present value and the two pass values creates a causal system in this example and the output does not appear before the input signing off is dr j